From the diary of John, Johanna Caladius, able historian of his sit- native city of Berman, Nosferatu, that name alone can chill the blood of Nosferatu. Was it he who brought the plague to Berman in 1838? I have long sought the causes of that terror epidemic. I have found its origin, its climax. The innocent figures of Jonathan Harker and his young wife Nina. Bremen, 1838, morning. At the home of Jonathan and Nina Harker, Harker leaves for work. Harker presents Nina with a bouquet of flowers. In the streets of Bremen, Harker walks to work. An old man approaches. Old man, wait, young man. You can't escape destiny by running away. Harker shakes the old man's hand and continues walking. A state office at Agent Renfield. Renfield reads a letter. Agent Renfield was a strange man. There were unpleasant rumours about him. Enter Harker, Renfield. Here's an important letter from Transylvania. Count Dracula wishes to buy a house in our, our city. It's a good opportunity for you, Harker. The account is rich and free from his, mo- his money. You will have a marvellous journey. And as a young as you are, what matter if it costs some pain or even a little blood? A house facing yours that should suit him. Leave at once, my young friend, and don't be frightened. If, we, if people speak of Transylvania as a land of phantoms... Homer Harkers. Harker, I may be away for several months, Nina. Renfield is spending me to some corner, last corner of the cap- Cathedians. Nina looking wor- looks worried. Harker left Nina with his good friends, Wes- Westner and his wife, Lucy. Outside of Westner's house, Nina runs to say goodbye to Harker. Harker, don't worry, Nina. Nothing can happen to me. Harker mounts a horse and rides away. Transylvania, from relay to relay, through the dust, raised by the sages, Harker hurried on. A coach speeds along rugged countryside, evening, a village inn. Harker disembarks for the coach and enters the inn. Harker, dinner quickly, I should already be at the Dracula's castle, the inn patrons. Look away and worry. Innkeeper, you must not leave now. The evil spirits will come all powerful after dark. Harker chuckles to himself in a room in the inn. Harker dresses for bed. He reads from a book left on the bedside. A book of vampires. And it was in... And it was in 1443. The first Nefafara's room was born. The name rings like a city of the bird of prey. Never speak it aloud. Men do not always recognise the dangers that beasts can sense at certain times. Harker laughs and goes to bed. Outside the window, Hyena prowls, British horses scatter in fear, British women cower in terror. Morning, outside the inn, a coach departs. Late afternoon, Caffeine mountains, a coach speeds along mountain roads. Pensioner, hurry, the sun would be setting. At dusk that evening at the crossroads, the coach stops and Harker disembarks. Driver, we will go no further, sir. Not for fortune. We will go no further. Here begins a land of phantoms. Driver throws down Harker's luggage. Harker walks away, crossing over a bridge. And when he crossed the bridge, the phantoms come to meet him. Harker is set met by a coach who carries him to Count Dracula. At the castle, Harker is greeted by Nessafaru Count. Never forget Nessafaru. You're late, young man. It's almost midnight. My servants have all retired. He leads Harker to sup at the dining table. Harker cuts his finger on a bread knife. 
That's fruits of blood, your precious blood. Arca wearily backs away. Now, Farato, let us chat together a moment, my friend. There are still several hours until dawn. Have a whole day to sleep. He leads Harka to the chair by fireside. As the sun rose, Harka felt himself freed from the oppressions pressures of the night. Harka awakens. He notes two marks on his neck. Later that morning, Harka walks into the countryside around the castle. He finds a gazebo and writes a letter to Nina. Nina, my beloved, don't be unhappy. Though I am far away, I love you. This is a strange country. After five nights night in the castle, I found two large bites on my neck. The mosquitoes, the spiders, I don't know. I have had some frightful dreams, but only dreams. Don't worry about me. I'm leaving immediately. Return to Bayham. And to you, Harker stops the traveller and gives a letter to the post. The twilight came on. The empty castle becomes alive the menacing of shadows. In a parlour of Count Dracula, Harker and the first that survived through review legal papers. The Count sees Harker's picture of Nina. Is this your wife? What a lovely throat. The old mansion seems quite satisfactory. We shall be neighbours. Count sounds, signs the documents tonight in Harker's bedroom. Harker packs away near his picture. He finds a book of vampires and reads more. That's a father drinks the blood of the young. A blood necessary for his own existence. One can recognise the mark of the vampire by the trace of his fangs on the victim's throat. Harker peeks out of his bedroom door. Count stands motionlessly at the end of the hall. Harker quickly closes his bedroom door, looks out the window at the river far below and climbs into his bed. Enter the Count. That last same night in Brandon, in a sombre bostic dream at the home of the Vestrians. Nina wakes in a trance and walks out of the terrace. Mary St. Vestrian follows. Messner, Nina, Nina collapses in Vestrian's arms. Enter servant. Vestrian, the doctor, quickly. Later that night, in Harker's bedroom with Count Dracula. The Count advances on Harker as he lies asleep. Meanwhile, in Nina's bedroom in Bram, a doctor, Vestrian, Westerner and Lucy stand over Lucy as she sleeps. Nina as she sleeps. Nina suddenly sitting up. Jonathan, Jonathan, hear me. Moments later in Harker's bedroom in Count Dracula, the Count turns from Harker's sleeping body, exit the Count. Meanwhile, in Nina's bedroom in Branham, sighs relief and turns, Nina sighs relief to turns to sleep. Doctor, a sudden fever? Doctor, lay Nina at Trance to some unknown disease. Since then, I have learned that she sensed the menace. She, she had sensed the menace in the first uh, for that very night, and Harker, far away, had heard her cries of warning. The next morning, Harker's bedroom, Count Dracula. Harker awakens. He rushes from his bedroom into the courtyard and wanders into a crypt. He finds the Count lying in a coffin. Exit Harker, horrified. Early that evening, Harker looks out of his bedroom window, sees the Count loading coffins on a horse-drawn cart. Count climbs into a coffin and closes the lid. Exit horses, cart, coffins and Count. Harker makes a rope from a bedsheet and climbs out the window. Harker falls to the ground below and is not unconscious. The next day, a cargo-burying raft floats down a river. The men, the men little suspected that terrible cargo they were carrying down the valley. Several days later, in a hospital room, somewhere in Transylvania, a nurse and doctor tend to Harker at his bedside. Nurse, some peasants brought him in. Here, him? Here last evening. He still has a high fever. Harker sits up suddenly. Coffins, coffins filled with earth in a shipyard. Sailors that quakes into the ship. Tipping over one cot, we find only dirt and rats. The Farisu was en route, and with him disaster approached Benham. At that time, Dr. Van Helsing was given a course on the secrets of nature and their strange correspondence to human life. The professor tell his students about the existence of a carbonous plant, carnivorous plant. Benham 
Professor Van Helsing's laboratory, Van Helsing, Paul Collins, watches of Venus flytrap, traps a fly. Van Helsing, astonishing, isn't it, gentlemen? A plant is a vampire of the vegetable kingdom. As a pharisee held Renfield under his influence from afar, a sanitarium attendant enters the doctor's quarters. A attendant the pa- patient has brought in yesterday, but has gone out of his mind. If ever a cell, a cell a sanitarium, enter the doctor's attendant. Renfield catches and eats flies. Blood, blood. Renfield eats at the doctor. Attendant subdues Renfield. In Van Helsing's laboratory, Van Helsing's colleagues peer into a tank. Van Helsing, and now, gentlemen, there's another type of vampire. A polymorph with claws, transparent, without substance. Almost a phantom. Nina is often seen alone among the dunes, watching for her husband's return. On the dunes overlooking the sea, Nina sits on the bench, looking out to the sea. Lucy and Westner bring Nina the letter from Parker. Meanwhile, in Parker's hospital room, somewhere in Transylvania, Parker dresses for his journey back to Bedham. At the same time, in Bedham, Renfield's circle, cell and sanitarium in Bedham, Renfield are forced to pick newspaper clipping and reads. New plague baffles science. A mysterious epidemic of the plague has broken out in Eastern Europe and port cities of the Black Sea, attacking principally the young and victorious Vigorous, young and vigorous, calls the two bloody marks on the neck. Each victim baffles the medical profession. Renfield laughs. <laughs> a bald dempster, first man, one man was stricken, then all. In hold of the dempster, Captain tends to a sick sailor. The count appears briefly, then fades. One evening at sundown, the captain and his first mate buried the last man on the crew. On the deck of them, sir, Captain the first mate, toss a body overboard. First mate, I'm going below. I want to have a look in the hold. In the hold of them, sir, first mate sees a farfazo rise from the co- his coffin. First mate rushes topside and leaps overboard. Captain ties himself to the steering wheel. Now Farfazo approaches the captain. Despite all sorts of obstacles, Harker's pushed on towards Branham. Meanwhile, driven by fatal breath of the vampire, the, the vessel moved rapidly towards the Baltic. One night, the wrestler's house. Nina rests at steep walks to the terrace. Lucy follows Nina. Nina, he's coming. I must go to meet him. The Branham Harbour, the De- Demeter, sells into port. In Renfield's cell at the sanatorium, Renfield attempts to climb out his window. Renfield, the master is coming. The master is here. Renfield escapes. I have long tried to understand why this Vardu travelled with earthfield coffins, recently discovered to preserve their diabolical power. Vampires must sleep during the day in the mo- same and hollow ground in which they have been buried. The Count carries his coffin from the harbour to his newly purchased house in Branham. Meanwhile, the Western's house, Harker returns and is met by Nina. Nina, Jonathan, thank God you're safe. Now I feel that I, too, have been saved the next morning by the harbour. Official search of Demanta. Captain's found dead at the wheel. Official, we don't, well, can't find a single living soul on board. A second official discovers the ship's log. A ship's log via Vainana to Benham. 24th of April, uh, 1838. Past the Dairenlis. East wind, carrying five passages. Mate, crew, seven. Myself and captain. 6th of May, 1838. Round the Cape of Edgram, one of the men, the strongest, is sick. Crew is restless and easy. 7th of May, 1838. Mate reported stowaway hiding below his decks. Will investigate. 18th of May, 1838. Past Gibraltar, panic on board. Three men dead already. Mate out of his mind. Rats in the hold. I fear the plague. Burgomaster, the plague is here. Stay in your houses. Hours later, in the deserted streets of Banham, town crier reads an address. To halt the spread of the plague, the burgomaster of Branham forbids the citizens, citizens of this city to bring your, their sick to the hospitals till further notice. Nina then had promised her husband never to open a book on the vampires, but she fans herself, unable to resist the temptation. 
in the living room of the Harkers, Nina reads from the book of the vampires. Parker recognised the mark of the vampire by the trace of his fangs on the victim's throat. Only a woman could break his federal, very full spell. A woman, pure of heart, who will offer her blood freely. To the Sepharsa, who will keep the vampire by her side until after the crow has, cock has crowed. Enter Harker. Nina, pointing out the window to the mansion across the street. Look, every night in front of me, Turns people moved in mortal terror. Who is sick or dying? Who would be stricken tomorrow at Harker's house? Nina lies sick in bed. Harker, don't be frightened. I will get the professor. Exit Harker. Nina looks out the window at the line of coffins being carried on the street. She reads from the book of the vampires. Only a woman can break the frightful spell. A woman, pure heart, who will offer her blood freely to the nurse of Arizo, will keep the vampire by her side till after the cock has crowed. Meanwhile, outside the sanatorium, two old women talk to each other. A woman, they say, saw him escape. He strangled his keeper. Bethel runs down an alley, pursued by a crowd. He jumps Climbs onto a roof. The crowd throws rocks at him. He climbs down and runs outside of town. The crowd pursues. <coughs> that night in Harker's bedroom, Nina is awakened by Nessa Farsu outside the window. She opens the window while Harker awakens and Nina faints in his arms. Harker, the professor, call the professor. Exit Harker, enter the, the Nessa Farsu. The next morning in the Harker's bedroom, a cock crows, and Asafaraso looks up for drinking ne- Nina's neck. Meanwhile, in Renfield's cell, there's Antorium. Renfield, master, master, master. Outside uh, Harker's house, Harker and Vasanzi arrive. In Harker's bedroom, sunlight sweeps across the buildings, across the street from Nina's window. Asafaraso attempts to escape, but is touched by the sunlight. He vanishes in a pump for smoke. In Renfield's cell at the sanatorium, Renfield, the master, is dead. In Harker's bedroom, Nina wakens to Harker. Nina, Jonathan. Harker takes Nina to his arms as she dies. At that moment, it, as if by miracle, the sick no longer died. And the stifling shadow of the vampire vanished from the morning sun. Thanks.